Hello everyone and welcome to the dev method. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the layout features that you have with Swift that are the view modifiers. So we're gonna take a look at some offset and some padding. Um, and we're gonna continue on with that GitHub mobile app that we were uh, doing in the last couple videos. So uh, what I currently have here is just as a review real quickly, this is the pull request view. And we have a couple of items that we have laid out here. So a couple V stacks for layout and H stacks. Uh, we've done some text and some font. So what we're gonna be concentrating on today is this part of the pull request on GitHub Mobile, which is this little open button. I'm gonna try and zoom in so you guys can see. Yeah, see how it says like the status of the pull request, that it's open. There's also one for merged. Now, I don't have any image assets here, so maybe we can improve that later. But for right now, we're just going to use some of the built-in um, SF symbols that come with iOS, starting with uh, iOS 13. Uh, let's take a look and see what we could use. It looks like some arrows. So I bet we could use, okay, like maybe this arrow here, um, something that points in a direction, but with like a curve to it. So let's see. Yeah, actually, okay, so we'll use arrow turn up left, and then maybe just like arrow up, maybe something like that. Yeah, all right, so let's take a look at how we could get this done here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually, uh, I'm gonna encapsulate this into a view. So we can just focus in on that. So I'll call it the, um, uh, the re I'll call it the, the request, pull request status. Pull request status view, like so. And uh, I'll take that and pull it all the way up to the top so we can just focus on that today. Okay. So struct, there it is. And it's going to be a view. It needs a body. I'm sure you've seen this all written out before. Um, so let's just put something in there to make sure that we know it's showing up. Hello from status view. Okay, so we got it up and running. Um, so this part here, let's let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, just just a just a little bit, so you can see it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, okay, so we'll need some text. What did the text say? Open. Okay, so open. And the way I break this down is we have that, and then we also have an image, and they're going to be side by side. So that's where we do the H stack here. Pull the image in. Image system name, like so. Arrow up uh, left, right? Is that the one? Let's get that preview working here. Oh, okay. Forgot a semicolon there. There we go. Oh, arrow turn up left. Yeah, okay. So that's the arrow turn up left. Um, and then in front of that, we have an image system name arrow turn, or no, it just arrow up like that. Okay. <laughs> so that's close. Uh, I would probably recommend maybe you just have an image asset from one of your designers on your team, um, or maybe draw this out in code, but uh, this will just get us by for the time being. Um, so the next thing here, let me just show you the, well, I guess let's get, just get a background color on this. Um, and the way we do that is we actually give it a background, which takes a view. And guess what is a view? Uh, color. Color is a view as well. So I'll just put green on there. So there it is. Um, now, if we want this to be a little bit bigger, like if we go back to the design there, it's actually, there's like some space to the border. There's like a little bit of padding. So we'll do the padding and we'll put it just before the background color. There it is. And then there's below uh, background color. See how it has to be in front. 
there. So let's just leave that there for now. We can always modify layer and shrink down, but I think that'll be good for you guys to, to look at there. Now, okay, so the next thing is the spacing in the V-Stack. Let's just take it like so. Okay, so no spacing in between all these things. Um, we do have some padding on it though. So see if I highlight here, ooh, it's a little tough to see. Let me make this like a, what would stand out? Let me, let me just do white here and just show you. Yeah, so that there, um, where that's that blue border, that little box around there, that's the previewer trying to help you show you where the padding is. Um, now, if I was to click the image, see how that image is there, that image is there, and then we have the text right there. So everything's like really squished together. Now I could say I want both of these things like four apart and it just moves like, like so. Um, but, but here's the thing. Um, I probably want to, well, let's say, let's just, but let's just put zero padding for now. Um, but then let's say we want like, I don't know, like the text here. We want it to be a little bit more that way. Uh, so there's this padding option on the text and it's showing here that it's edges first argument and then the length as the second. Um, and what you do is you give it, an, it says edge.set. So you give it a set, which looks like an array syntax here, array literal. Uh, and then you can do dot notation to leading, uh, there's trailing, and then uh, top and bottom are another one there too. And you could do a series of them. Um, you could even do just horizontal. So I'm just gonna do leading right now. Um, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of padding to the right. And let's say four. Okay, so it pushes it a little bit over. So that looks a little bit better. Um, so then let's talk about another one besides the padding. There's also offset. So let's take this guy and use an offset. Let's just do zero and zero, just so you can see that it makes no difference there. Um, but now if I wanted to push it a little bit up or down or left or right, uh, that's what the Y and the X are. So let's just be, let's just uh, put this uh, way above or way below uh, the view. So that's 10 above. Here, I'll just do 100, okay? Yeah, so you get the idea. Um, now we put a negative on that and it'll go like way up on the screen. Let me go 10 just so you can see. Yeah, see how that works there? So let's just say we want it like, I don't know, two. Uh, I don't like two, maybe zero. Zero is kind of like the best option right now. I don't know, let's just, let's just do a two. So it'll kind of look like this. And then the only other thing is that um, I kind of actually kind of want the arrow maybe to be higher up. So let's take this out. And let's do the arrow just a little higher up. So that'll be an offset of negative two, something like that, and negative one. Okay, now we're pixel pushing, but that's the idea uh, of using these two here. Um, why don't we go ahead and just complete what it is uh, we want this color to look like. So we want it green. Um, now the text inside, we need it to so we also need that to be green as well. So yeah, it's like a, it's like the just the regular like dark green here. Um, maybe maybe not even like a dark green. I'm not sure what we would call that. We're just going to use the plain old green for now. But then we need a transparent green behind that. So why don't we do? Okay, so that would be the foreground color for the text. So for for the foreground color, it's going to be color dot green like so, or since it expects a color, a struct color, you could just do dot green there. Now here's the thing, all the text disappears, so you gotta go back here and put an opacity on this. So we'll put two. And uh, the last thing I want is the rounded corners. So I'll put that right here. So corner radius, eight. So close. Right now, the next thing though is the padding. So I don't like the padding just being the standard padding here. Um, what if we just did 
with, uh, let's see, the padding, but with zero. So that's what the padding looks like with zero. So let's just start from there. Um, this text is actually way too big. So why don't we give the text a different font? And we'll say it's a caption. Let's get a little bit smaller. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and then the images need to be a little bit smaller too, but let's work on the padding first. So padding, uh, the text already has its own padding, but we want this padding here. And let's just say it's, let's go with the top and bottom first. Okay, so the top and bottom, I don't know, four. So we do vertical four, like that. And then we'll do more padding here, but now for the horizontal. And let's say that's eight. How's that look? Kind of looks good. All right, now if we can get the images smaller, that would actually help out. So let's do a frame. And we'll just, we're gonna give it a static width and height because it is so small. Um, I don't see us blowing this up or scaling it larger than it needs to be right now. So let's just say uh, 22 and 22. Oh, that's actually too big. Uh, maybe eight and eight. Oh yeah. So. Something I'm seeing here is that, uh, let me zoom in even further. So that frame, see how that frame is like smaller than the arrow? We actually need to make this a resizable image. Yeah, there we go. And let's do the same thing for the other. Okay, so that's kind of how it looks now. Uh, the rounded corners are a little too much maybe four. Okay, that's a little bit better, I'd say. Um, okay, let's look back here. Yeah, see, it's still a darker, darker color. It's like a darker green than just the green that's over here. Hmm. All right, so we'll probably have to make a color uh, later to help us differentiate that. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Oh, you know what? We need a little bit more offset. And let's do that actually on this guy here. So negative two. Yeah, just pull them apart just a slight bit. Oh, maybe negative one. How does that look? Eh, that's okay. All right, so thanks for watching the video today. Uh, we took a look at some different ways to use padding and some offset. Um, and then again, we reviewed some of the colors and corner radius that you can put on your views. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to put a comment below, tell me what you guys think and uh, tell me what else you guys wanna see. Thanks for watching.